64th Annual Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Awards Ceremony. My name is Mark Hackbarth, and I'm the president of the Midland City Education Association. I have the honor of representing the teaching and special services staff at the Midland Public Schools, many of whom are here today. I am honored and excited to have the opportunity to open the Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Awards Ceremony, an event that the MCA has co-sponsored with the Midland Public Schools Board of Education for 64 years. During this event, we recognize our current slate of retirees, along with those who have attained significant years of ser service milestones with MPS. And of course, we honor the teacher teaching excellence of four amazing educators. This is one of my favorite events of the year. To hear the stories of the impact that our winners have had on their students and their colleagues is incredibly uplifting and motivating for those of us who are continuing our journey in a career in education. This year, my wife and I have a son who's graduating from Midland High. Some of you here know him, I know. As we were discussing with him his plans for his future, I remembered back to when I was a high school senior myself. Um, when people found out that I was planning on becoming a teacher, many of them would ask, why become a teacher? You could do anything else that you want to do. And of course, the underlying inference in that question was, somehow teaching was a lesser profession. My answer then was because I enjoy working with kids. My answer now would be so much better. Why not work with computers? Computers were starting to be the thing then. I would say that I work with technology every day. I troubleshoot both my students and my own technology, and I find ways to use technology to make my teaching better. Why not become an engineer? I would say that I design prototype lessons and repeatedly test and improve those lessons till they're as good as I can make them. I'm engineering lessons from hour to hour, day to day, year to year. Why not become a medical professional like a doctor or a nurse? I would say that I'm frequently triaging and diagnosing my students. <laughs> Who needs a Band-Aid? Who needs help with a bloody nose? Who needs to call home? Who needs to just go to the bathroom? Elementary teachers will know that one. Um, and who needs to be referred to someone else who can help? Why not become a scientist? I would say that I'm often arguing from evidence. I'm collecting data in order to know who is understanding the concepts and who I need to do further interventions. I'm analyzing data as to the effectiveness of the lesson as well as my own teaching. Why not become a lawyer? I would say that I'm convincing my students each day of the importance and relevance of what they're learning. I'm also convincing parents of their students' strengths in areas where they need improvement. Why not become an artist? I would say that I use creativity every time I design a lesson, um, put together an activity, draw a diagram to explain a concept, or tell a story. As a teacher, I'm performing every day in my classroom, which is the stage. So why become a teacher, they asked because I get to do everything that I could have chosen to do all those years ago. Our Gerstacker winners certainly embody what it means to be everything for their students. To conclude my remarks, I would like to express our gratitude to the Gerstacker family for their continued support of this award and program. Lisa Gerstacker is in attendance today representing the Gerstacker family. Thank you once again for your willingness to recognize and support the talents of our educators. During the first portion of our program, we honor years of service to the Midland Public Schools. These years may have been spent as a teacher, learning coach, interventionist, counselor, therapist, psychologist, or administrator. I would like to ask each of these individuals to stand as I call their name. Please hold your applause until all of the individuals are standing. Celebrating 25 years of service are Kelly Brewer, Brenda Frazier, Jenny Lennon, Lori Kazmarek, Mark Naffey, Ann Pellet, Kim Reinhardt, Kathy Romaine, Kathy Snyder, and Karen Staley. <laughs> With 30 years of service, Kelly Bays, Cindy Griskoviak, Mary Jo Griffin, Ann Gunsel, Mark Jungle, Luann Kuznicki, Judy Pillett, Sherry Sopkak, Diane Sugnet, 
and Lynn Verdusco. And last but not least, with 40 years of service, Bob Cooper. At this point, I would like to introduce our superintendent, Mike Shero, who will recognize this year's retirees. As Mark mentioned, we are so glad that Lisa Gerstecker could be here with us this afternoon. So thank you, Lisa, once again. Thank you to the Gerstecker family for their support through the years and the sponsoring of these wars celebrating Midland Public Schools students and teachers. It is truly my pleasure to express my appreciation and say thank you to our teachers, the staff members who are on the front lines working and make a difference in the lives of our Midland Public School students each and every day. <clears throat> After six years together, by now you may know that I am a true blue baseball fan through and through. Many know that one of my daughter's names is Casey. Yep, you guessed it, after the old poem, Casey at the Bat. Those who teach in our elementary buildings also know for the past six years, I have come to our elementary schools, read to our students during March's reading month. And of course, the books I share with these students are books about baseball. One of the books I've read to the students is titled, Baseball Is by Lewis Borden. The book talks about what baseball is, ballparks, rivers, of people, front row seats, the field, the foul poles, the starting lineup, the leadoff hitter, America's anthem, and much, much more. As the book is nearing the end, it talks about three outstanding players of all time. Babe Ruth, the greatest of the greats, the boy from the Baltimore docks, sent to the school for the orphans and toughs, who penned his autograph for thousands of young fans, because for Babe, whoever Wherever he was playing, it was the kids who mattered the most. Jackie Robinson, a strong man, a fine man, his courage in baseball brought equal rights for those of color, whose Dodgers shirt hangs in every ballpark today. The legacy of number 42 is the human spirit we honor. And Roberto Clemente, the outfielder of speed, the human humanitarian who showed Americans his skill and the world his dedication in those in need. <clears throat> we know our students are like the three baseball players who are honored in this book. Different nationalities, different colors, different backgrounds, different strengths, and different challenges, working toward an important common goal. Of course, for Babe, Jackie, and Roberto, the common goal was to be part of a successful team and be the best baseball player they could be. With our district, the singular goal of our dedicated educators to work together as a successful team, to give our students the very best education we possibly can, no matter the nationality, the color, background, strengths, or challenge they may swing, for the outfield fence to achieve their educational career and their goals, no matter what they be. The last six words of the books are, because in baseball, anything is possible. Without a doubt, as in baseball, for our students, each and every school year, anything is possible. We see evidence of this through the successes and accomplishments we publish and communicate every Monday and the our schools we publish every quarter. We know Medellin Public School students' successes and accomplishments would not be possible without the dedication, knowledge, and heart of the MPS educators who share with their students each and every day. Please never doubt you are valued and you are appreciated. This evening, we want to send our sincere thanks and very best wishes to our 13 certified retirees for sharing their combined 324 years of service in public education with the students, families, and staff of Midland Public Schools. You will be missed. When I call your name, retirees, please come to the front of the stage where you will um, hear some nice words about you. First up, is Luann Bensinger. <clears throat> Luann began her MPS journey in 1991. She is the elementary curriculum and instructional specialist at the administration center. Her career has spanned 35 years in public education. Before coming to the administration center, Luann taught for many years at Woodcrest Elementary. Next up is Alan Chappell. <laughs> Alan
Alan is a science teacher at Midland High. He joined our staff in 1991 and has spent 28 years with the Midland Public Schools. Alan has taught at Dow High, Northeast, Intermediate, and Midland High during his MPS career. Next up is Bob Cooper. <laughs> Bob is the MPS Associate Superintendent of Finance, Facilities, and Operations at the Administration Center. He joined the MPS team in 1979 and has spent 40 years in public education, all with Midland Public Schools. During his MPS career, Bob has worked with MPS students, staff, and families at Northwe Northeast Intermediate, Midland High, and the Administration Center. Bob received his Gerstack Award in 1996. Next up, Carrie Keeley. Carrie's an art teacher at Jefferson Middle School. She was hired in 1998 and has spent 20 years with MPS. During her MPS career, Carrie has taught art to students at Dow High, Jefferson, Northeast, Central Middle School, Seabird, Longview, Carpenter, Chippewassee, Woodcrest, Plymouth, and Cook Elementary Schools. <laughs> Next up is Carla Cook. Carla is a special education supervisor in the special services department, serving students and families at H.H. Dow High and Jefferson Middle School. She was hired at MPS in 2007 and has spent 22 years in public education. During her time with us, Carla has worked with students, staff, and families in all of the MPS buildings. Next up is Paul Kohani. Paul is a sixth grade teacher at Jefferson Middle School. He joined the MPS staff in 1998 and has spent 21 years at Midland Public Schools. During his MPS career, he taught at, Ch at Chippewasi, Plymouth, and Jefferson. Next up is Kelly Krause. <laughs> Kelly is a fifth grade teacher at Plymouth Elementary. Her first year with MPS was 1985. During her 34 years with MPS, Kelly has taught at Central Intermediate, Chippewasi, Carpenter, and Plymouth. Next up is Linda Lipset. <laughs> Linda is the principal at Adams Elementary. Her first year at MPS was 1997. She spent 33 years in public education. Linda has worked with MPS students, staff, and families at Longview, Plymouth, Midland High, Carpenter, Chippewasi, Adams, and the Administration Center. <laughs> Next up is Kathy Romaine. <laughs> Kathy teaches seventh grade mathematics at Northeast Middle School. Kathy's first year at MPS was 1993. She has spent 32 years in public education. While at Midland Public Schools, she had taught at Carpenter Street School, Central Middle School, and Northeast Middle School. Kathy received her Gerstacker Award in 2013. Thank you to all of our 2018-19 MPS retirees for your public, for your combined 324 years of dedication to Midland Public Schools, students, staff, and families. You will be missed. Thank you. Yeah, I know Mike likes his baseball analogies. One of these years, I'm going to open the remarks with a baseball thing and see what he does when his uh, <laughs> time comes. Also, if Kathy would have been here, Romaine, we would have had nine down in front, like he was introducing a starting lineup. But <laughs> anyway. So anyway, the Gearstacker Award is widely recognized in our community as the most prestigious honor given to a professional educator. Due to our exceptionally talented MPS staff, the selection of the four winners is always incredibly difficult. This year was no exception. Many educators were nominated and all were deserving. Before we recognize this year's winners, I'd like to take a moment to thank several people who have made today's celebration possible. First, my fellow Gerstacker committee members. 
John Lauterbach, member of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education, Scott Cochran, curriculum specialist, previous Scarestacker Award winner, Robin Bott, Northeast Middle School teacher, and Amy Guzman, Midland High School teacher and the MCEA Professional Standards Chair. Thank you also to the Dow High Honors Orchestra and their director, Amanda Toms, for the incredible music that was played as we entered the auditorium. Thank you as well to Kelly Bishop, Midland High School art teacher, for creating the wonderful program cover. Thank you also to Diane Bush, the MEA um, secretary, office professional, um, for making the certificates for the retirees. And last but certainly not least, a special thank you to um, Cindy Young, our MPS board secretary, for all the, behinds work, all the behind the scenes work that makes the ceremony possible. At this time, I'd like to turn over the program to fellow Gearstacker Committee and Midland Public Schools Board of Education member, John Lauterbach. Thank you, Mark. Before I get to my remarks, I want to point out that Mark Hackbarth chose well. He's way too smart and too good a speaker to be a lawyer. It, uh, good afternoon. It is my uh, privilege to represent the Midland Public Schools Board of Education this afternoon as we recognize and celebrate what makes our district shine, its teachers. In addition to my role as a board member, I also bring the perspective of a parent of an eighth grader at Jefferson and a junior at Dow High, as well as being a, an uh, alumnus of the Midland Public Schools. I'm trying to figure out how a guy who graduated with my sister can possibly be retiring, but uh, <laughs> Alan Chapel, congratulations. My, uh, my message this afternoon to our Gerstacker honorees, to our retirees, to those being recognized for years of service to the district and indeed to all of our teachers is a simple but heartfelt thank you. 324 years of combined service. That's tens of thousands of lives impacted by your hard work and dedication. My election last year to the school board has brought me much closer uh, to the district than I've been in, in, in many years and it's given me the opportunity to reflect on the influence and impact that uh, teachers have had on my life. And I've, I've been thinking as I was going through the names of, of past Gerstack or award winners, Richard, I saw names like Richard Faulkner, Ellis Nixon, Chuck Trzinski. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Carol McQuillan, uh, Bob Zack, Mike Fettersfield, Joe Ramsire, and Chris Redman, people who, who, um, whose subject matter instruction were, were, were outstanding, but you know, I, I, I don't use the, the curriculum in the work that I do, but I hear their voices and I see their faces all the time because of the impact that they had on the person that I am uh, uh, today. And so when I talk about the influence and impact that teachers have on kids, I'm not just talking about, ac uh, about academics, I'm talking about making people, in my own experience, a better dad, a better husband, a better citizen, a better coworker, and a better friend because of the impact that teachers have had on me. Now as a parent of two MPS students, I see the influence and impact that you are having on them, and it, it humbles me and makes me very grateful. So on behalf of the Board of Education, on my own behalf, on behalf of my kids, to each and every one of you, and certainly our, principally our, our Gerstacker Award winners, I wanna say congratulations and thank you very much. <laughs> and sin to prove that I'm teachable, Cindy, I'm going to introduce Jeff Jaster. Good afternoon, teachers, administrators, community members. It's an honor to be here. I'm excited to present the first Gerstacker Award of 2019. Before I start though, I'd also like to thank the Gerstacker family uh, for their support of Midland Public Schools and of all the great teachers in our district. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work of the selection committee because, as you just heard, there were many deserving teachers nominated and it's a lot of work 
to go through that process and then plan for today's event. So thank you. With an audience of educators, I think it's safe to assume that all of us have um, seen the impact that a great teacher can have on the life of a student. Great teachers can change lives. They inspire people to do better and to be better. Obviously, the selection committee received, uh, as I said, many deserving uh, teacher nominations. But the teacher I'm here to recognize today is truly one of the most dedicated and committed teachers I've had the pleasure of working with in my time at MPS. I'm fortunate in my role to witness the work of great teachers every day. I know, teacher who connect with know teachers who connect with students simply because they put in the extra effort to get to know them, to build relationships with them, and to make everyone feel important. I also know that there are great teachers who, you know, really because of their creativity, the way they plan their lessons, the extra work and time they put in, they challenge and push students farther than the kids think they might ever go on their own. And often they do that without the students even realizing it as they go through. So there's really an art to being a great teacher. Great teachers put in lots of work. They embrace opportunities to improve every year. They're the first to acknowledge that there's always room for improvement at the beginning and end of every school year. This is one that I think is critically important. Great teachers are collaborative, they're reflective, and again, they seek out opportunities to hone their own skills. And it's no surprise the Gerstacker winner I'm honoring today is one of these great teachers. She's an expert in her content area, but she's so much more than that. She models hard work, commitment, dedication to teaching and learning. She encourages students to take risks, to challenge themselves and others, and most importantly, to learn from the mistakes they make along the way. I've also seen her firsthand teach and model what it's like to be respectful, to respectfully disagree, and still do that with dignity and you know, keeping your emotions in check. This person is a team player. Being a team player is a key element in the success of any school, really in any organization for that matter. As an added twist, this year's Gerstacker winner couldn't join us today because she's still working. So I'm told in the history of the Gerstacker Awards, this is a first. Usually they're here. So in this case, um, it's just another example of her dedication and commitment to the work that she does. Today our winner is in California. She's with 13 MHS students at BPA Nationals. And so the big reveal is that Andrea Joswick is our 2019 Gerstacker winner. There she is. <laughs> Congratulations, Andrea. Welcome to the Gerstacker Awards. I'm not done yet, though. <laughs> As is typical, there are some behind the scenes planning and some scheming that happened to pull this off. Andrea thought she was joining us to help recognize her colleague, Elaine Mahabier, and Elaine is going to join soon. Uh, but before I do have her come up, I need to read some. <laughs> I need to read some background information. So uh, Mrs. Joswick has been a teacher at Midland High School for 16 years. Um, she began her career in special education, but most recently she's been teaching business education and computer science to 9th through 12th grade students. Prior to her official hire in MPS, she also worked in the banking and healthcare industries. Her education background is um, from Central Michigan University. She earned her bachelor's degree in 2003 and also a student taught at Midland High School that same spring. In 2008, she completed the requirements for her master's degree in education leadership at Saginaw Valley State University. And at this time, I'd like to invite Elaine and some of our other uh, students up here to help recognize Andrea. Andrea, your, your aunt and uncle are here as well, Carol and Terry. So they're oh, gonna that's join. that's my in-laws. <laughs> your okay. your in-laws, yes, correct. My Mark's uh, aunt and uncle, okay. yes. So they're going to be up here in just a minute to wave at you. Okay. All right. You have to stand. You have to stand right here. Yeah. Hi, Jazz. Hi. <laughs> hey, your dad's here and Aunt, Aunt Terry too, right? No. Yeah. Terry, oh, look. Office? Here, look. Oh, you have a seat. Hi, Dad. Congratulations. Hi. Hi. Thanks. She's very proud of you. I love you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm going to talk, but I want you to see them, all of them. Okay. Okay, so I could not be happier to be here uh, helping present this award to Andrea. Not only do I admire her a ton as a professional, um, but I cherish her friendship and that of her family's uh, 16 years we've been working together. Uh, in fact, I should have known the first time I met her that I was going to like her because she is a doer. She fixes things. Um, I'm forgetful. Things happened. Uh, the first year we were working together, I had been at Midland Public Schools a couple years, but it was Andrea's first year. And we were having a conversation in the main office, and I said, oh, what do you mean parent conferences are tonight? I think I have an eight-month-old that I'm not sure I have a babysitter for. Uh, I think I better do some fixing of that. She said, oh, don't worry. I can help you with that. She's like, my husband, Mark, would be happy to babysit Chase. And I'm like, really? He doesn't know Chase. She's like, well, we have a son about the same age. They can hang out. And they did. They played in the back of Midland High School. Mark fixed it. Uh, and I, I think Mark's there now, I'm pretty sure. So 15, 16 years later, Andrea's still volunteering Mark uh, to do things along with her. So when we hired Andrea, and she's been a great, there he is, he's there, I know. She, she drags him along. Uh, not only have we had her to uh, be a doer for Midland High School, uh, but she's brought her whole family along, uh, and, and we've gained great friendships uh, along the way. So... Andrea is also uh, a fixer, and uh, there he is, the man behind her. There you go. Yeah. So, um, so that was that was how I met Andrea. She said, "Well, don't worry, I can fix it." And she's been doing that for myself, our colleagues at Midland High School, and throughout the district. I think since we've hired her, and, and I just think that that embellishes uh, who she is as an educator. Um, so two years ago, we were talking. And I had just resigned for or retired from coaching and she said you got a little extra time and I was like yeah she's like I've been kind of busy while you've been busy coaching and stuff she's like I'm trying to do this BPA thing with like 70 plus kids and it's kind of a lot and I'm like oh I'd be happy to help so she took me on and gave me half of the, the little bit of money that she'd been making which I, I really shouldn't be taking because in the last two years I realized she lets me do a few things and I get to do some computer stuff and file some papers, but I don't really get to help in any way because when the kids have a question, they go to Andrea. And, and it's not just because of her, her wealth of knowledge that she has, but it's because she has the answer or she will fix it always, and they know it's gonna take longer for me. So I get the busy work, and Andrea fixes the problem and gets to work with the kids, and I'm okay with that. I love that part about uh, our relationship. Um, I'm happy to be there to do any type of filing I can, uh, and I try to help in you know, working with the kids. Um, so I brought a few kids along that are actually gonna have an opportunity to speak. I do wanna say, though, too, that in the process of all of this and in finding out that Andrea won, I've had a few people uh, approach me and say, are you doing stuff behind me? Oh, okay. Uh, approach me and say, you know, my child went through Midland High School 10 years ago or five years ago, and Andrea still keeps in touch in, with them and checks on them, and, and, you know, she gained a relationship with them in the classroom uh, but or through BPA, but she's working with them still and trying to fix things even after they've left the school. So, Andrea, there are a lot of people who uh, are so thankful that they've had an opportunity to work with you and, and you touch their lives. Um, and I brought a couple of students, Carly and Carson, to talk to because you work with kids so well. I thought people should hear from kids. So... First off, hi, Miss J. Good luck to everyone there. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I have. I'm Carly Servinsky. I'm a junior at Midland High, and I've had the pleasure of getting to know Miss J through BPA um, last year. So I was very hesitant in joining BPA. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, and for those of you who don't know, BPA is a business professionals club. Um, so I got to know her through that. And through that, I've gotten to know that she is one of the most encouraging, supportive, positive, and passionate people that I've ever met. She is so passionate about what she does. I mean, she's in California right now supporting these 13 students. She gives so much time to that. And that's something that I really appreciate and admire in her. Um, so just an example of this is that a few years ago, uh, before I was at Midland High, there was 
a group of students who joined BPA, and there's a team called Parliamentary Procedure, which is not something very common, and Midland High did not have a team. And Miss J was completely supportive of it in um, creating that team. But parliamentary procedure is something that has a lot of rules and a lot of things to learn and a lot of things to know. And no one really knew them. And so um, when that particular student had created that team, Miss J was not only supportive of them researching it themselves and going into that themselves, she helped find the information. She provided them with resources, and she threw her entire being into helping these students. And um, when I joined BPA my sophomore year, that's the team that I decided to join. And um, it was a brand new team. We hadn't had very much experience, and we ended up getting second place at Nationals last year, which would not have been close to possible without Ms. J as our advisor. She provided so much help and so much information and support and encouragement to us, and that's something that I really admire and I really appreciate in her. So thank you, Ms. J. We really love you, and have fun in California. <laughs> Uh, first off, I just want to congratulate Miss J because if it wasn't for her, I definitely wouldn't be able to speak in a crowd this big. <laughs> but my experience with Miss J started on the very first day of high school when I was just a scared freshman who walked into her computer tech class and just sat down in the back just trying to get my work done. And then about a month into it, because I went to a BPA meeting in the morning because my ride to school was going to it. <laughs> I didn't really look much into it, and I didn't think I was going to do it. I just needed to get to school that day. <laughs> but later that day in class, Miss J came up to me, and for some reason, she told me that she thought I'd be good for this team called Small Business Team. And I was really on the fence. I wasn't too sure about it. I was kind of just like a freshman who didn't know what clubs to get involved or where I wanted to go with my life. But Miss J just kept talking to me, told me. She showed me what it was all about. She introduced me to some of the people, and finally I uh, decided to go on the team, and it really made me who I am today. Because throughout that first year of BPA, I was able to gain confidence, interact with people, and really just get a better understanding of people, because I was working with like upperclassmen, juniors and sophomores, and it just really helped me get to know BPA better and what Midland High was all about. And then later on, I just kept doing it, and then I found my passion for BPA, and that's just kept me thinking, and I'm going into business now at uh, Michigan State next year, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to thank Miss J for showing me what business is all about and helping me become the person who I am today. Okay, Andrea, that was our presentation, so again, congratulations. Uh, we wish you good luck there, and I think we can hear you if you want to try to say something. Um, well, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you got me, Mr. Jaster. <laughs> uh, usually, I, not without words, but uh, all of these students here, everybody kept us such a great surprise. Um, thank you, Elaine, for the kind words. Um, I met Elaine back in 2003, and she was probably my first friend at Midland High, um, and our boys have become friends. But uh, Midland High is just a place, uh, pride just bleeds through the walls, and it's, it's an extension of my family. It's who I look forward to see every day, and um, just thank everybody for keeping such a big secret. <laughs> and I'll be back, I'll get you with Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Andrea. We will see you when you get back. All right. Good Thank luck. Thank you, guys. Yep. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Take care. We're really proud of you. <laughs> All right. My next job is to introduce Shannon Blazy, principal of Central Park Elementary.
Good afternoon. I'm Shannon Blazy, the principal of Central Park Elementary. At Central Park, we are very honored to be here to share with you the next Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Award. The Central Park mascot is the explorer. The definition of explorer is a person who explores an unfamiliar area, an adventurer. The Gerstacker winner takes well to adventure. The adventures of teaching have brought her service and dedication to hundreds of students throughout the district. Here are a few comments from those that nominated our Gerstacker winner. This person is very compassionate and committed to pushing students to be their best. This person's door is always open to brainstorm ideas for any variety of concerns, whether it be academic, behavior, or otherwise. Our Gerstacker winner is said to be an amazing support throughout the building, kind, compassionate, humble, dedicated, and has a genuine caring nature that helps you rise to do the very best that you can. The Central Park Explorer is often found in the building after school hours and on the weekends preparing lesson plans, making copies and getting ready to go above and beyond with students and staff each week. When you give as much as this Gerstacker winner does, it is important to take some downtime. This person who is at her core an explorer takes her downtime to the great outdoors and happens to enjoy the adventures of camping. With the help of our Central Park staff, we will share with you some of the important camping items that our happy camper takes with her wherever she goes. All right, so our happy camper always has her batteries fully charged and shares her positive energy with everyone at our school. Our camper also carries a flashlight because she is a guiding light for Central Park Elementary. She is never without her Swiss Army knife because she has just the right tools to help colleagues and students with any problems that may arise. Our happy camper also never camps without her first aid kit because she is often the first to respond and take care of those around her. She always has an ample supply of sunscreen in her backpack as she protects and advocates for the staff and students in our building. She leads the way at our district's newest campsite, Central Park Elementary, where with her compass, she leads us to just the right intervention for success. Our happy camper brings matches because she's willing to light a fire under our <laughs> to encourage us to do our very best. We have a, dim a Dibbles book for those of you in secondary. And let's not forget about the kindling she uses in that fire. <laughs> uh, every good camper is sure to bring snacks for their trip. Our happy camper supplies her staff with chocolate and Pull and peel Twizzlers, a favorite snack of hers, to help her make it through many, many meetings. <laughs> our Hamby Camper is always there to keep our heads above water, and she's quick to offer a floaty when we feel like we're sinking. And our Happy Camper carries a map to show where she has been and where she is going. Our happy camper has a spot marked at Midland High, Siebert, and Plymouth. We are so happy that currently Central Park marks the spot. We are very lucky to have our happy camper at Central Park. She is the true essence of what an educator should be. One of the nominations stated that she takes on and supports some of our most struggling students. With her special education background and kind spirit, I could not ask for anyone better to assist me through this process of learning our literacy program. She has made my first year of teaching far exceed my expectations. Another name, nomination touted, she has amazing expertise in literacy and committed 
and dedicated to all students and supports staff in achieving goals. She is so deserving of this honor as she really goes above and beyond each and every day and her accomplishments are too long to list. A colleague shared that Lisa has always exhibited the qualities of a leader since I have known her. She shares her knowledge with everyone and works patiently with both staff and students until they feel comfortable becoming more independent. Her quiet and unassuming nature provides non-judgmental atmosphere that allows an individual to share a particular lack of knowledge comfortably. With full pride, we would like to introduce you to this year's Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching recipient, our colleague, our explorer, and our happy camper, Lisa Holman. a shock. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say I am very humbled. As I look at those list of people who were at the Gerstacker, knows me well, I'm a crier. <laughs> but as I was saying, I just know there's so many people that are deserving of this, and I definitely couldn't have been awarded this presentation tonight without all the people who have come into my life. I feel like God has blessed me with so many people that helped me on my journey. I've had wonderful mentors, colleagues, ancillary people who also have helped me. I definitely am not an expert in anything. I feel like I'm always learning. And every day when I walk around the building, now at Central Park, I am just amazed and in awe of the qualities and loving and kindness and compassion that these teachers show and how hard they work day in and day out, which I also saw at all the other buildings I've worked at. And I know it occurs here at Midland Public Schools and they don't always get the recognition that they deserve. So I definitely am not standing up here alone. I'm standing up here because of all the help and love that people have given me along the way. So thank you so much to the Gerstacker family for honoring me tonight. Congratulations again, Lisa. Well deserved. Um, our next presenter is Mr. Jeff Penix. Well, good afternoon. It gives me great satisfaction to have the good fortune of participating in the 64th annual Gerstacker Proficiency Awards. Every year since 1956, Gerstacker Awards have been awarded to outstanding educators who are nominated by students, parents, and colleagues. Since we currently live in somewhat of a society that is often crazed with the newest version of this or that, it is noteworthy when something stands the test of time. In the name of providing some context regarding the length of time that the Gerstacker Awards have been part of the landscape of Midland Public Schools, a gallon of gas costs 30 cents, 
The Dow Jones Industrial Average had just peaked above 500 for the first time ever, and Dwight D. Eisenhower was president when the term Gerstacker Awards became part of our vocabulary. As this brief walk down memory lane indicates, these awards have been part of the fabric of Midland Public Schools for a lengthy period of time. Another thing that's been part of our fabric for a long, long time is a legacy of outstanding educators. I know when I joined the district a number of years ago, I was pleased with simply being granted an interview because of the excellence that was known far and wide about the district. I've heard similar sentiments from many other colleagues through the years, and I've also heard these same words from the mouths of prospective candidates during interviews for a variety of positions. So while I'm certainly pleased to be able to share some information in just a moment with you about our most recent Gerstacker Award winner, I also want to make a point to thank all of you who have joined us today and all the educators and support staff who have contributed to the long legacy of excellence that is associated with Midland Public Schools. Please know that I not only say this as a colleague, but also as a parent of a soon-to-be graduating senior. Thanks for stretching me and making me a better educator. Thanks for stretching each other, and thanks for stretching my very own child. MPS is a great district. I'm grateful that the Gerstacker family had the vision and desire 64 years ago to establish these awards as a means of acknowledging outstanding educators within our exceptional district. So who is the next recipient of a Gerstacker Proficiency Award? Well, while preparing my comments for today, I thought it'd be wise to follow the time-honored tradition of building up to sharing the name of our newest award winner by creating a trail of breadcrumbs of thoughts from students, parents, and colleagues as opposed to simply announcing, and our next award winner is. So with that in mind, I thought I would f attempt to go the route this afternoon of a parody of comedian Jeff Foxworthy's famous You Might Be a Redneck If <laughs> routine. And to not give uh, Mike high blood pressure, there's nothing inappropriate, <laughs> at least in my eyes, or controversial, I might add, uh, in the rest of my comments here. Uh, but I'll try to use that routine as a way of building up to actually sharing the name of our next winner. If you're unfamiliar with Mr. Foxworthy's rather famous comedic sketch, he is from the South and good-naturedly laughs at himself while also poking fun at relatives and stereotypes of what he calls rednecks from the South. His, you might be... A redneck pieces have been viewed by scores of live audiences and well over two million times on YouTube. His shtick goes something like, you might be a redneck if the blue book value of your truck fluctuates with how much gas is in the gas tank. <laughs> he then goes on to deliver numerous other you might be a redneck lines about stereotypes of folks from the South. As you might imagine, his redneck sketch can be modified to poke fun at the stereotypes of people from all parts of the country. Mr. Foxworthy, for example, has modified the previous mentioned routine for places like upstate New York with laugh lines that are somewhat specific to what life is like in that part of the country. Since upstate New York's climate is very similar to ours, you'll probably relate to some of his thoughts, such as you might be from upstate New York if you design your child's Halloween costume to go over a snowsuit. Or you might be from upstate New York if you've ever worn a parka and shorts in the same day. Okay, I think you get the idea. While I'm admittedly no Jeff Foxworthy, I will try to somewhat follow in his footsteps by going with the parody, You Might Be a Gerstacker Winner If. All right, here we go. <coughs> you might be a Gerstacker winner if a nomination by a parent stated, the nominee is a veteran teacher whose class flows seamlessly and with great intentionality. Each child is heard and respected each day and students are thriving under her care. The nominee is a diligent communicator, lots of fun, and has created a learning environment that fosters incredible growth in her students. We are so grateful our son has Mrs. X. He has blossomed in her class. You might be a Gerstacker winner if a nomination from a parent nomination said, the nominee is the best. Not only is she an understanding, patient, excellent teacher, but she is also an incredible role model. At the beginning of the school year, she attended one of my daughter's soccer games and cheered her on. That was a great way of showing that she was invested in her success. We could not have asked for a better teacher. You might be a Gerstacker winner if a student's input on a nomination form said, I like Mrs. X because she is the best. I like that she is always happy, joyful, kind, and caring for everybody else, and not just for herself. <laughs> she is a pretty singer, and she dresses nice. You might be a Gerstacker winner if, while going through your personnel file, I came across a Midland Public Schools employment form 
that ask the next winner to only use a black typewriter ribbon while completing the form. Based on this hint, it probably goes without saying that this person was hired approximately a decade before the turn of the century. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sure I'm going to pay for that tomorrow. <coughs> you might be a Gerstacker winner if evaluation from a number of different evaluators throughout this person's career included comments like, interaction with students is a real strength for Mrs. X. Her genuine fondness and concern for her students is very apparent. She respects the dignity and worth of all her students and works diligently to enhance their self-concepts. I have been very pleased with the manner in which behavior problems have been addressed. Mrs. X strives to make each situation a positive learning experience for the student involved. A different evaluator noted, among her many strengths is the one that stands out the most in my mind, that being her warm and nurturing personality. Mrs. X nurturing style promotes self-confidence and risk-taking for children. It is a pleasure to work with Mrs. X, whose optimism and enthusiastic energy for teaching are ever apparent. Earlier I remarked about the importance of longevity and the respect I had for the way the Gerstacker Awards had stood the test of time. In the name of clearing up any opportunities for miscommunication, please know that I am not implying that our next award winner was teaching when Eisenhower was president. No, the point I'm trying to make regarding longevity is that this person has done an outstanding job of teaching and working with young people for a long time. As I referenced moments ago, evaluators from many stages of this person's career and with many different professional backgrounds of their own have arrived at the same conclusion. This person does an excellent job of working with and developing the whole child. Since we also live in somewhat of a what have you done for me lately society, it is also worth noting that the individual who will be called to the stage shortly received a Shining Star Award in the spring of 2017 as a result of nominations submitted by parents. All right, I need to start bringing this thing in for a landing and wrap up my poor man's version of serving as Jeff Foxworthy's understudy. You might be a Gerstacker winner if you grew up in the thumb of Michigan and were a member of a graduating class of 64 students. As a quick side note, since I know we have a couple of athletic directors in the audience, I'm not sure what that size of school would have been considered as far as the Michigan High School Athletic Association's classification system of large schools be being considered class A schools and next to large schools being considered class B schools, et cetera. In my impression, I think that it might have been classified as class J, uh, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, no matter what the school's athletic designation would have been, our next recipient made the most of her time there as she went to Saginaw Valley State University on a full scholarship and ended up graduating in 1981 from there with the designation of summa cum laude. She later returned to SVSU and earned a master's degree in early childhood education in 1990. Our next recipient began her teaching career as a second grade teacher at Longview in the fall of 1989 and has been teaching at Woodcrest since 1991. You are a Gerstacker winner if you are great at what you do, a valuable member of our outstanding team at Woodcrest, and your name is Lynn Verdusco. <coughs>
sorry that took so long, but I am blessed with an amazing family. <laughs> um, this is a definite surprise and so very, very humbly. I work with people every day that do amazing things for kids. They give it their time, they give it their energy, they do so much. Oh, watch that. Oh dear. <laughs> I work with amazing people every day. It, it amazes me how much our teachers give of themselves. They give to their students, to the parents, to our community. And we're blessed with not just amazing teachers, but we have paras and we have support staff and we have so many people that do so much for us as teachers, for our students and for our community. And I can't imagine working anywhere else. My whole career other than teaching preschool. My whole career has been at Midland Public Schools and I cannot imagine having a better community family than we have here. And behind me are many people affected by Midland Public Schools. All three of my children went through. I have grandchildren in here and I wouldn't want them anywhere else either. I love what we are, what we do, and what we stand for at Midland Public School. And I just wanna thank you so much for this honor. Congratulations once again to Lynn, and I now need to call Ted Davis to the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Penix. It is with great pleasure I have the opportunity to present the Gerstacker Teaching, our Excellence in Teaching Award. Before we get started with celebrating and revealing our Jefferson Husky recipient, I would like to thank the Gerstacker family for allowing us this opportunity to celebrate teachers. The teaching profession consists of a group of dedicated and unsung heroes who make outstanding contributions to the educational community. They are extremely talented people who, I believe, would have been successful in any profession. Yet, these individuals chose to help our students grow through their educational endeavors. How important are teachers when it comes to our students? Research has shown the single most important factor influencing student achievement is the classroom teacher. This research has also shown when it comes to student performance on reading and math tests, a teacher is estimated to have two to three times the impact of any other school factor, including services, facilities, and even leadership. Great teaching is a learning process, a process teachers must continually work to master. Great teachers must be able to effectively communicate, collaborate, accommodate, remediate, enrich, listen, close the gap, test, counsel, console, Ensure students grow and are proficient, take part in PLCs, continually seek out professional growth opportunities, and be a mom and dad to students on almost a daily basis. And this list has only scratched the surface of what is required to be a great teacher. I do appreciate the opportunity to take part in this celebration of all teachers and their dedication to our students and schools. To have the opportunity to celebrate this profession is quite an honor for me. And once again, thank you to the Gerstacker family for your continued support and opportunity to celebrate great teaching. So now let me get on to the dance of revealing the Gerstacker recipient from Jefferson Middle School. I'm gonna give you a hint right off the bat. It's not Mary Zeitler, Trisha Clancy, Kelly Bays, Mark Naffey, or Steve DeReese. They've all won this award, so they're out and everybody else is in. In order to prepare for today, I wanted to put myself in the best creative mindset possible. So naturally, I went to our recipient's classroom for inspiration. 
I walked the entire room looking at the inspirational artifacts displayed on the walls and tables. It was easy for me to see why this teacher was chosen as a Gerstacker recipient. When students walk into the classroom, they're immersed in this teacher's passion for their subject area. As one former student said, this teacher makes learning come alive. You can feel this teacher's passion every day. A colleague continued with, from the moment students walk through the door to the moment they leave, they are living and learning the content this teacher is teaching them about. The activities this person creates are simply brilliant. Another colleague added, this individual is invigorated by the opportunity to help all students learn and live the content. As I continue to scan the walls, I found a quote that states, whatever you are, be a good one. I firmly believe this teacher lives by this saying. To say this teacher works to be a good teacher is an understatement. This teacher exemplifies not good teaching, but great teaching. The amount of time and effort this teacher puts forth each day to ensure the needs of all their students are met is astonishing. As one colleague said, this teacher's energy and work ethic never seem to flag. They arrive early, work through lunch, stay late every day. And whenever I pop into their room at lunch, they are grading papers or working with students. And I know firsthand from observing this teacher, students are consistently challenged every day. They live and interact with each other in this educational community built by this educator. This teacher will challenge students to be their best every day. As students walk out of the classroom, they know they, ha they all have the power to make a change. Abraham Lincoln once said, I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I intend to do so until the end. This recipient has been teaching, well, for a while. They started their career at MPS at Central Intermediate, which no longer exists as the middle school or high school. So this teacher has been around for a while, but that doesn't mean they're old. That means they are very young at heart. When a master teacher has worked to perfect their craft and is getting amazing results from students, one might think they would enjoy their success, enjoy the successes from their hard work. This thought has never crossed the mind of this dedicated educator. His growth mindset has been present since he arrived at MPS and continues today. When this teacher first started at MPS, he quickly joined the Middle School Action Committee. This committee's assignment was middle school teaching strategies. He knew the importance of exposing himself to as many teaching techniques and strategies as possible. He also enrolled at CMU to take content classes to help him become more familiar with the material he taught to students. He soon after started a master's program in history. He has consistently worked to improve his teaching since he started. He's not afraid to take a risk and most importantly, it's not afraid to fail, a necessary quality when it comes to perfecting teaching. A colleague said, as someone who mastered curriculum and classroom management long ago, he could be resting on his laurels a bit, but that is not his style. He is always looking for something new to try with technology, design a new project, or tweaking an assignment to meet the needs of all his learners in his classroom. This teacher truly makes education come alive, and I mean truly it comes alive. He will dress up and debate with students on historical perspectives. He adds meaning to the content by presenting students with challenging situations, forcing students to stand up and defend what they believe, even when it means taking a risk that can affect your grade. A former administrator said this teacher demonstrates a real enthusiasm for teaching. It is not uncommon for him to be part of the role playing in his activities. Quotes from his students such as, this was awesome, and can we do this again tomorrow, are powerful messages that students are enjoying learning and living the content in his classroom. I believe many of you have been able to zero in on our recipient at this point. I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. And as I said, I was sitting in the classroom looking around as I worked on this speech. I started thinking to myself, how can this person be such a phenomenal teacher 
He's such a poor judge of sports teams. Every team displayed in the room was a team that I hated. This person's a Green Bay cheesehead during the NFL season, one of the Lions' biggest rivals. This person likes watching baseball games in a stadium off of Waveland Avenue in Chicago. And I prefer the riverfront view down in Cincinnati. And this is the worst part. He also likes Michigan State. And I say go blue. On a side note, he's been quick to point out that Michigan State beat Michigan in basketball not once, not twice, but yes, three times this year. And I really appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that the MSU announcements over the PA come right after I say something positive about U of M. Mike always mutters some historical line about uh, equal representation, yada, 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 whatever. I tell you, the more I think about this, based on those decisions that he's made, maybe another vote for this? I kid, I kid, I kid. At this point, I'd like to congratulate Mike Trebilcock on being selected as the Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching recipient. not finished yet, Mike. <laughs> Every day when a student comes into Mike's classroom, they are greeted with what you do matters. Mike has created a classroom culture where all students are empowered and individual thoughts are respected. Students truly are immersed in and taken back in a time to not just learn history, but to experience history. For those of you who don't know Mike, one of his favorite historical figures is Abraham Lincoln. I believe this quote from Lincoln might sum up Mike's thoughts on winning the uh, Gerstacker Award. Don't worry about when you are not recognized, but strive to be worthy of recognition. Mike has never been a person who sought the spotlight. Mike has a passion for teaching his students. In a time where technology is ever-present, Mike works to take his students back to a time where you fought for your beliefs in person and not on social media. Mike gives his best every day and works to meet the needs of all his students. He is truly deserving of this recognition and once again, congratulations to Mike. Wow, thank you. Uh, very humbled, very honored. Really all I can think about right now is my mom and my wife are bro both probably thinking I should have got a haircut <laughs> before today. <laughs> but they probably couldn't tell me because it would have been a little too obvious, I guess. Maybe you should get your hair cut before Thursday, okay. Uh, Again, thank you to, to everybody. Thank you to the Jefferson staff who I work with every day. They're phenomenal. I was looking at the, the program of past winners and just really honored to have my name there with some of those people from my time at Central. I recognize some of those names and some really great social studies teachers in the past like Randy Kawakita and Connie Altimore and Kelly Bays out there. So thank you to the Gerstacker family. Thank you to everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
let Mark Heck bark through the best part, which is it's time to go mingle, celebrate, and enjoy some food. So next door, um, correct to the side, uh, we have a, 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 some food set up, some snacks set up, and let's mingle and celebrate from over there. So congratulations, everyone. Thank you again to the Gerstackers. What a great ceremony this is.